Spring is like smoking. You think it'll help you in the short term, but it makes you stink. The only reason you started is to fit in, and it's incredibly difficult to get rid of. Instead of having any positive effect, it just ruins your ability to breathe or function normally until it eventually kills you. Now, I've never smoked before, and for many years I had never used spring. This was thanks to a strict but expensive habit of throwing my computer out of the window whenever I saw an annotation of any kind. But a stroke of misfortune and misjudgment has left me in a position where I have to maintain and build on top of an existing spring project. Thanks, Bruno. I came into it with an open mind. There has to be a reason that spring is so popular. Maybe the industry has made the right choice. But after six months, I can assure you that the people who gave you JavaScript and microtransactions have once again made the worst possible decision. I now know more than ever that spring is the worst framework ever created. It basically boils down to this. Spring gives the illusion of easy and fast development, but if you're doing anything that isn't the ideal case, it's always slower and more frustrating than doing things properly. It's like if I said my Peugeot 206 can do 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds, but only off a cliff. Spring will save you 2 hours during the first initial ride, but cost you an extra 6 hours a month when maintaining and debugging. Spring's gimmick is that it leverages annotations and code generation to make everything look like normal code. The idea is that you just write your domain logic and everything else is generated for you. This sounds like a good idea, but it isn't. While your domain is the most important part of your product, and what makes it unique, the edges still matter. They are how you communicate with the outside world. Authentication and authorization headers are the backbone of the security for your entire application. Your database model and queries are what determine if your application takes three or 30 seconds to load. You need to get these things right. And when these things go wrong, which they always do, you can save hours of your time by having visibility on them. It's easy to fix bugs in your domain. You can write controlled unit tests that replicate every scenario. The hard bugs to fix are the ones that have to do with serialization strategies, database queries, and these things that are on the edge of your application. Spring tries to map all concepts to normal JVM code. HTTP route paths to classes, endpoints of functions, headers, body, and URL parameters are all function parameters. But this is not a sustainable way to write code. Everything is being magically generated instead of explicitly defined. As a developer, you should have a strong understanding of HTTP, and whatever framework you use should facilitate that understanding. Instead, this framework is abstracting HTTP away, and only letting you deal with it through very specific functions. Annotated functions are just weird and wrong. These aren't even real functions. Look, they're all unused. I know that technically, the client is calling these functions, but stop, you're lying. This isn't using RPC, so stop pretending that the endpoints are functions. We lose common language because of this. You you now have to know which annotation or parameter you're meant to use, and there is no easy way to implement features that you aren't familiar with. To do anything more complicated than this in Spring, you need to learn the framework. This is different to any other normal framework, where your understanding of the actual technologies are all you need to maintain code. You have a request and a response. I can see the request variables and use code completion to find the headers, parameters, authentication, and if I want to return data with a different serialization method or use different response code, it's all here. I don't have to guess which annotation does what, or figure out the right word that lets the framework know which variable it needs to magically inject. I don't want magic, especially when things break. Understanding HTTP instead of a particular framework is what's important. It's where the improvements actually lie. You need to know what response code is returned, or what serialization method is used. You need to know how the JWT is being passed and which headers are being used. Sure, when everything goes right, the Spring implementation works fine, but this is software and everything never goes right. If your authentication starts failing, not only do you have to understand tokens, headers and permissions, you also have to come to grips with Spring's magical implementation of all those things, and hope that it has a straightforward way to do what you want. Where are the headers? When are they being passed? How is the token validated? Where is all this configuration? Looking at this endpoint, it's not clear at all. All I have is a function and an annotation. There is no connection between this and the rest of the application. It is very common to use an ORM with Spring. 
The general pattern is that you add an annotation to your domain classes and Spring will generate code to load and save data directly to a data store. This is incredibly dangerous and will actually cost you a lot of time and money in the long run. I'm going to tell you something that will save you hours of your life. If you have a seemingly impossible bug that you cannot reproduce consistently, even in a controlled environment, it is almost always a race condition. You can save yourself hours of debugging by assuming it is a race condition and working backwards from there. Similarly, if you have a performance issue, it is almost always one of two things. A nested for loop, which is fixed by using a hash map or a blocking call, which is fixed by writing a better query, adding the proper index or adding a cache. All of which are actually kind of just hash maps. So the solution to all performance issues are hash maps. The problem with Spring is that it abstracts away blocking calls and database queries from you. It's pretty important to know whether a function is making a database call or not. And if it is, you better have a very good understanding of what that query is doing. Almost all of your application's performance will come from these queries. Writing better queries will make your user experience better and save you money by easing the load on your database. Automatically generated queries will do none of these things. Engineers should have a solid understanding of SQL and leverage that to make a performant application. I want to know where every single database call is, what it's doing and when. I want to understand which queries are cached and in what way. The domain of your application is important, but its interaction with the database is what determines performance and scalability. You have to get this stuff right. Don't mess around with bad queries or ones you don't understand. They will tear down your database and bring everything else down with it. Don't put abstractions around the fundamentals. Understand them and get them right from the start. It will pay dividends in the long run and prevent or shorten many incidents. It's incredibly confusing and frustrating to try and figure out why the database is taking 30 seconds to return data when you don't even know what query is being executed, even more so when it's happening in production. Your domain model isn't guaranteed to be identical to your database one either. This is a bold assumption that Spring makes. The database model is optimized for queries, while the domain model is optimized for clarity. Assuming these things are always the same forces you into suboptimal design. Expensive calls should be clearly visible, not hidden away. They should stick out like a sore thumb, and you should feel guilty every time you make a call to a blocking function. The guilt will set off the alarm bells in your head and help you double check that you are making the right choice. If your expensive query just looks like normal code, mistakes become easier to make and much harder to fix. These annotations would work fine if your application is the simplest possible case. A small table with a predictable output and a generic endpoint, which won't change much over time. But how often does this actually happen? If this problem has already been solved, why is someone paying you to solve it? Our applications are complicated, always growing and changing. Spring is a framework that helps you start very quickly, but it tends to be easier to restart from scratch than to add any new features. It's not clear where anything is or what it's doing. Annotations hide all the most important logic away from the developer. We are engineers, not magicians. We should be afraid of what we do not understand. And I have no interest in putting the time into understanding the inner workings of a framework instead of understanding the fundamentals that power today's technologies. I care about HTTP and SQL. I want to be good at these things. I don't want to be an expert at a particular framework. The skills I'd learn just don't translate or help me solve problems. They just help me unblock Spring. And what use is mastering someone else's framework at all? At that point, I may as well create my own so it's perfectly tailored to my application and use case instead of this spider web of dependencies. Whatever happened to do one thing, do it well. This is closer to do everything and make it unusable. The answer to every issue in Spring is to add another dependency. Who cares about understanding the problem? Just add someone else's code, which is always filled with unnecessary features and call it a day. I don't want to be someone whose job is picking the right dependency. It's not a sustainable practice. We should take pride in our work and do it well. An over-reliance on external dependencies causes confusion, removes control and abstracts understanding away. Beware the cost of a dependency. Nothing ever comes for free. And if you hope to be around for years to come, you better make choices that facilitate steady and healthy growth. What is the best way to pass a variable to a function? A pretty common way to do this is to just pass the instance of the variable you want to the function. Pretty simple, right? Well, apparently not. Because a huge part of Spring is dependency injection. The worst part of dependency injection done this way is that it spreads like a disease through the application. Soon, you can't even instantiate a class if you wanted to. If you use an annotation to inject a dependency, by design, all of that class's dependencies have to be injected in the same way. In Spring applications, this bubbles all the way down so that all classes are instantiated like this. 
What demon would cause someone to do this? I don't know. I like knowing which variables are passed to my classes and being able to follow them through the application. I also like being able to create multiple implementations of the same interface and swap them out easily in code. Doing dependency injection properly, as is designed by the actual language, is easier because it is more clear which implementation is where and what parameters are used. There is a clear connection between the class that is created and where it is used. But it's much worse than that. Spring's dependency injection actually facilitates poor design. Design. It gives you a get out of jail free card, but by calling any class from anywhere, you lose control over what classes are created and how they are shared. Usually when you design an app, you have to declare your shared variables in common code and then pass them around where you need them. This pattern forces you to be deliberate about shared dependencies. It's very easy to see when two different parts of the code are using the same dependency and may manipulate the same underlying data. It forces you to decide which module owns what interfaces and implementations. The way you structure your app dictates your ability to grow and manage it in an ergonomic way. Instead of having everything use shared interfaces and having a giant module with everything in it, you can leverage modules to create a monolith. This can still be done in Spring, but the architecture doesn't lend itself to thoughtful design, and developers often take the path of least resistance. I want to instantiate each variable and know where each implementation is going. I don't want everything to be singletons. If a repository is shared between two services, I prefer to use the standard mechanics of the programming language to ensure so. Same thing if I want each service to have their own instance of a dependency. I don't want to play guessing games with the annotations and hope that the framework behaves in a reasonable way. It often doesn't. And I know you don't have to use all these features, but just shut up. Spring is the worst. Why would anyone do this, even for just a little bit? I don't want a little bit of diarrhea in my cereal. I want none. Annotations and code generation take away all of your power as a developer. The ability to automate and write code to change the behavior of a program. You can't do that when all the logic is hidden behind annotations. I don't want to be playing dependency Lego to build an app. I want to build an app that is easy to understand and deliberate in its design. No wasteful dependencies creating 35,000 classes through annotations for no discernible reason. The worst part about Spring is that since everything is masked behind annotations, you lose your ability to implement simple features in actual code. You're heavily disincentivized to build it yourself and incentivized to use yet another dependency you don't really understand instead. Spring's popularity isn't an indication that it is good. Plenty of people decide to smoke every day. That doesn't make it a good choice. Spring was a mistake. The fact it is such a mess and that it is so popular is what makes it the worst framework ever created.